all my little prince and princesses, welcome back to Reading for Purpose. As always, Miss Sylvia has been looking forward to this time that we share together. So I would advise you to definitely make sure you're all comfy, have your ears open, um, not only to hear the story, but to pay attention for any lessons you can pick along the way. Why? So you can apply them to your life and be the light that glorifies Jesus in everything. So let's get started. Today's story is The Way Home, A Princess Story by Max Lucado. Let's get started. The Way Home. The Way Home, A Princess Story by Max Lucado. Illustrated by Tristan Elwell. Long, long ago, in a kingdom more majestic than any other, there lived a beautiful young princess, Anna. Anna had not always been a princess. When she was an infant, the king had found her, abandoned in the forest, and brought her to the castle to raise her as his own. Yet as Anna grew, so did her curiosity. She wondered about the world outside the kingdom. What had she missed? What lay beyond the green gardens of the castle? Anna sighed. She propped her elbow on the ledge, rested her chin in her hand, and stared out the castle window. Flowers dotted the meadow, children splashed in the creek. Beyond the meadow, the dark forest loomed. What a beautiful day outside. What a bad day to be inside. <clears throat> Princess, a voice called, your studies? Yes, Sir Henry, Anna glanced again toward the forest. Is it true? The round man looked up, raising his eyebrows. Excuse me? About the lowlanders. I hear that they never work and their days are all filled with fun. The tutor lowered his book. Forget them. They mean us harm. But all I do is work. I'm just not sure I was meant to be a princess. Sir Henry crossed the room and rested his hand on Anna's shoulders. I have watched you since the day you arrived, and I have been your teacher since you were small. I have seen you blossom with your father's guidance. Listen to me. The forest is no place for anyone, especially the daughter of royalty. Those trees know an evil that does not sleep. But, Sir Henry interrupted by placing a finger on her lips. Your studies, there is much to learn. Anna nodded, but stole one last glance into the valley, wondering about life away from the castle. Deep within the forest, three lowlanders plotted and rummaged through costumes. Ima and Guna usually shared a costume. Let's be donkeys, Ima offered. Not again. That suit is hot and you stink, Guna smirked. Getcha pulled on a hood. The princess will feel sorry for a pulled old hog. Passing as hags wouldn't be hard for them. With hunched shoulders and warty noses, they looked apart. The they were tree stump shaped with faces as bumpy as cobblestones and ears as pointy as oak leaves. Getcha was the tallest, but if he were to stand near the princess, he'd barely come up to her waist. You two dress as a farmer ordered Getcha. I'm on top, Ima shouted. You got the top last time, Guna objected. Yeah, 
And look what happened. I was brilliant. We met three castle dwellers. Silence! Getcha interrupted. Holding a finger skyward. We had one shot at the princess. Obed will be angry if we fail. The three lowered their heads. Obed, whispered Guna. Obed, echoed Ima. After a quiet moment, they resumed plotting. Getcha instructed. Tomorrow, when the teacher brings the girl to the creek, you two distract him. And I'll lure her into the trees. He hissed and smiled, his one-two smile. Oh, Ben will be proud. Back at the castle, the king shook his head. Why? He asked his daughter's teacher. Why is she so curious about the lowlanders? He stroked his square jaw and stared at his old friend. Maybe she wonders what her life would have been like if she had not become a princess, Sir Henry explained. She hears rumors about their easy life. Easy? Dwelling in a dark forest? Dodging the wrath of a bed? She's young, Your Majesty. Yes! But she's mine. The king shook his head. I've tried to tell her so many times. She's meant to do important things. Perhaps she will listen to me, your majesty, Edward said, stepping forward. The king smiled at the young man who spoke. Edward was the strongest of his knights. Indeed, she might listen to you. Edward, she certainly notices you. Edward's face blushed, but he did not smile. We must put an end to these thoughts of the Lola. Obed sees your daughter as a prize to be won. The king stiffened at the sound of his arch enemy's name. You're right. Talk to her. Tell her how they poison minds. And he paused. Remind her once more how much I love her. Sir Henry led Edward through grand halls toward a large door. He heard feet pattering on the other side and shook his head knowing Anna was dashing toward her desk from the window. As they entered, she reopened her book. Anna looked at Edward and smiled. Her beauty stole his breath. Black satin hair, rosy cheeks, deep green eyes. It wasn't long ago that he had avoided her. During that time, he had trained to be a knight. She had excelled at being a brat. How was she so suddenly pretty? Edward, Sir Henry reminded. Oh yes, he answered, clearing his throat. <clears throat> With your permission, my lady, she nodded. Your fascination with the forest troubles us, princess. Have you met with them, Edward? Her excited voice betrayed her curiosity. The lowlanders mean you harm. But I've heard they have nothing but fun. You've heard wrong. Avoid these servants of Obed. She shrugged, but the tone of Edward, Edward's next words urged her to heed his caution. Your father loves you so much, Anna. She smiled, and I love him, Edward. I know, to be careful. The knight nodded with uncertainty and then dismissed himself. Still worried, he walked through the halls, fearing the worst. He was right to do so. The next day, Sir Henry kept watch as the princess waded in the creek.
the blue sky and bubbling waters lifted his spirits. Suddenly, a voice called, Help, friend, help! The teacher turned to see a farmer ambling toward him. The wide-brimmed hat and chest-length beard covered Ema's face. Guna, hidden within the long coat, groaned beneath the weight, barely able to see. He tripped, causing Ema to wobble even more. The sight of the old man might have roused Sir Henry's suspicions, but the man's clumsiness, clumsiness stirred his compassion. He hurried toward him, unaware of a disguised lowlander approaching the princess. Is it true what I hear, young woman? That you desire to visit the forest? Anna, knee deep in the water, looked up with a trusting smile. You know the lowlanders? Indeed, I do. The princess glanced toward her teacher, helping the old man. But, uh, I can't. It will only take only a minute, the woman enticed, beckoning with a crooked finger. Anna looked toward the castle, then back to the entrancing little figure. By the time Sir Henry had righted the clumsy farmer, the old woman had convinced Anna to follow her into the forest. For just a peek, Getcha assured in his highest voice. Only a few steps into the trees, Anna regretted her decision. She couldn't keep up with the woman. This may be easy for you, but I'm too... Too what? Getcha snapped in his normal voice, turning with such speed that his hood flew off. Anna tried to scream, but couldn't. Too tall? Too pretty? Too good for the lowlanders? You are one of us now, he proclaimed. The princess turned to run, but the forest had closed behind her. Your king can't save you, Getcha cackled, rubbing his hands together. Meanwhile, Sir Henry and the villagers searched, but no one had seen where Anna had entered the forest. The princess was gone. When the king heard, he wept quietly. Who took her? He asked Sir Henry. I don't know, the teacher responded sadly. Suddenly, Aunt Edward entered, pulling the farmer by the sleeve, leading him before the king. Guna, within the cloak, tripped on Edward's foot, sending the two imps sprawling. The lowlanders scurried to their feet. Edward drew his sword. The king motioned him back. Where did you take Anna? The king demanded. Ema snickered. Take her? She went by choice. Liars, defied Edward. Any evidence of resistance? She wanted to leave, Guna added. The king shook his head sadly. He knew the lowlanders spoke the truth and he knew that no one except a lowlander could navigate the forest. Would he ever see Anna again? His attendants assumed he wouldn't want to. To be kidnapped is one matter, but to run away? He spun from the window and surprised them. I will go after her. Their response was quick, but the forest. I will cut a path. I am strong. Silence hung. Finally, one night dared. But she has chosen them. The king replied, She has been my daughter much longer than she has been with them. And so the king prepared to leave, vested in his strongest armor, bearing his sharpest sword, 
Emboldened by the kingdom's bravest heart, he stood at the castle's gates. Edward offered to accompany him, but the king declined. This is my job. But you will need help. I'll be fine. You wait here and guard the castle. Edward straightened. That I will do. When you return with Anna, you'll find me waiting. Sir Henry apologized again for his part in losing the girl. You aren't to blame. The king said softly, placing a hand on Sir Henry's shoulder. This battle was destined to happen. People lined the castle walls, watching the king stride toward the trees. Without hesitation, he entered the forest, and with one mighty slash of his sword, ancient bows began to tumble. The image of Anna crawling her way through the brushwood tormented him. His arms and legs bled from the thorns. Her cuts would be worse. As the fog thickened, lowlanders mounted resistance. Imps snapped at his legs, swinging from above, they clawed his shoulders. Lacking courage to face him, they hid in the brush and darted from holes. One flash of the king's blade and they scampered into hiding. They could not slow his progress or lessen his resolve. The forest ended abruptly. The king stepped into a clearing, his clothing and skin torn. He found Anna confused in the center of the village. The forest dwellers had abandoned their huts. The princess didn't run, nor did she approach her father. She stood frozen with shame. He sighed. Her clothing and skin were shredded, her hair matted and caught with burrs. Her back was already beginning to stoop like a lowlander. When he touched her shoulder, she stiffened. Come back with me, he lover. She said nothing. Why would you stay? She had no answer. Not for her father, not even for herself. Come back with me to the castle, he offered. I'm one of them now, she mumbled. But you weren't made for this. The king was silent. He knew what had to be done. Looking for me? The sound of Obed's voice made the monarch cringe. Your daughter is content here. No one is content in your presence. Obed's eyes glowed. His batted wing cape hung to the ground, exposing clawed feet. I have come for Anna. She is mine, one of many to come. They cannot resist. You can't keep them from the shadows, Obed growled. I'll give you something better, the king offered. What could be better than the daughter of the king? Obed laughed, then realized what the king meant. You wouldn't. The king's silence was his answer. Give yourself? Anna turned toward her father. No, she prayed softly. Obed risked no delay. He opened his cape, releasing legions of lowlanders that rushed to swarm the king. Soon Obed stood over the king's lifeless body. Behold your king, Anna. His love couldn't save you nor himself. Anna rushed to her father. Her tears dropped into his face. What have I done? Obed yanked her up. You have sealed your people's doom. He cocked his head, releasing high-pitched laughter. The lowlanders jumped, danced, and screamed at the feet of their leader. Anna stood still. What have I done? She asked herself again. Kneeling, she took the king's hand and pressed it to her face. Then she felt his hand move. She searched his face. 
For years, when we tell him this story, she would describe this moment. His eyes open and sparkled as if saying, they may try, but they can't kill me. She stood, Obed commanded, grab her! Stop, her father declared, jumping to his feet. You have no power over me or mine. The lowlanders crept backward, Obed did too, muttering. He and his defeated followers ducked into the forest. Just then, Ima and Gruna appeared. We escaped! Anna is ours! Ima stopped. Gruna ran into him. They stared at the king, then at the empty village. Ah! Uh, looks, looks like we came at a bad time! Ima whimpered, slowly backing away. The two turned and ran between the trees. The king turned to Anna, smiled, and extended his hand in her direction. She still didn't understand. I can't go back. I don't know the way. But Anna, that is why I came. For the first time, she saw the opening, a path leading to the castle. Now she understood. Placing her hand in his and her trust in him, she made her choice. Stay with me, the father invited. I'll show you the way home. The end. Such a beautiful story. Um, I absolutely love this story. Just wanna show you the crown at the end. And I love this story for many reasons. And in all reality, life, you will have your mountains, you will have your valleys. Everybody comes from different walks. But one thing is certain and one thing is true. We all have to make a decision. We have to make a decision if we will follow Christ Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our God, and our only Redeemer. So just as the king in this story, Christ Jesus is our king. And Obed and all his little imps as Guna and Itcha and um, Gima, I think it was. But as all those little imps, that represents Satan and his workers, demons and devils. Um, and those are works of darkness that come to stop us, that come to distract us that come to um, destroy the purpose that King Jesus has for each and every one of us. And our only hope is to know that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the only answer. We are put on this earth to fulfill the God-given destiny that he has placed in us, that he will be glorified in each and every one of our lives. And as this story, as we saw with the princess, Sometimes, you know, people make decisions and they live thinking that the ways of the world, that the temptations of fame, money, living for oneself, running after pleasures of self-satisfaction, of running after um, pleasing people, of running after doing what oneself wants is the answer. But that's a lie. That's not. That's not fulfillment, that's not enjoyment, and that is not life in abundance. What that is, is distractions, darkness, and leaving, leaving this earth not following Christ Jesus, not fulfilling his will. So, my little prince and princesses, I want to encourage you to know that you may be young, you may be older, but at the end of the day, we all have one thing in common. We are placed on this earth to fulfill God's will. And we have to make a decision that nobody else can make for us. We cannot piggyback off of anybody else. We ourselves have to make that decision. Whether we choose to follow Christ Jesus and make him Lord of our lives and serve him, not according to our own standards, but according to how he tells us in his word. That means whatever God says, we must do. We can't question it, we must obey because the Lord is truth. He's given us his beautiful word as the basis, the basic instructions here on earth to fulfill his will. 
to live glorifying him and to have life in abundance because with Christ Jesus, we live being blessings and we are blessed, we are protected and we are guided by him. So my encouragement to you is to know that in choosing Christ Jesus is the best decision you will ever make. It's the safest decision you will ever make. It is the truth that will supersede and override everything. So I pray that you this day, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have not accepted him into your heart and invited him to rule and reign in and over you, that you will do that. That you will just pray this prayer. Father, in Jesus' name I come to you. And I ask in the name of Jesus that you will forgive me for all of my sins, my iniquities, my transgressions, and all my unrighteousness. And that you will cleanse me with the powerful blood of Jesus. And Lord Jesus, I acknowledge and I know that you are the Son of God. And it is only through you that I can go to the Father. And it is only through you that I can have life eternal. And it is only through you that I can be saved, set free, redeemed, and preserved into your heavenly kingdom. So Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart to rule and reign and guide me, direct me all the days of my life. And I ask that you will fill me with your Holy Spirit, that I may live honoring and pleasing you, fulfilling your will. I pray this all in Jesus' name. And I pray now, Miss Sylvia will pray, that God will bless you all and direct you and keep you. That he will cover you in the precious blood of his son, Jesus Christ. That he will direct you all the days of your life and that he will give you a heart after him. A heart to fulfill his will. A heart that will yield to his direction, to his voice, to know him and to obey him. I pray that the Holy Spirit will take you and will reveal Christ Jesus in ways that you could have never imagined. That it will be so personal, so intimate, so loving, so true all the days of your life. And I pray this in Jesus' name. And my little prince and princesses, I thank you so much for spending time with me. You are such a blessing to my life and I pray that I will be a blessing to your life. And there is a Bible verse I would love to share with you. And you might say, well, why Miss Sylvia? Well, because as you read, or as I read to you in this story, the princess thought that what, what, what she didn't have, which was outside of the castle, right? was the answer because it sounded like fun. It sounded like everybody was living a life that she wasn't. But what she didn't know was that she was being protected. She was being preserved. She was being kept and taught, nurtured to be everything that the king had ordained for her. It was gonna be life and life in abundance. I mean, that's how we have to see it, that Jesus has a plan that's gonna give us life and life in abundance, not only here on earth, but there is an eternity. And you have to know that it is either heaven or hell. And hell was not created for us, it was created for Satan and his demons. But Jesus has a place in heaven where there's no tears, no sorrows, it's life, it's no sickness. And that's where we wanna be because that's his will for us. So my little prince and princesses, know that Jesus loves you. And I pray that you meditate on the word that I'm going to share with you and that you share it with others. Be the light that shines bright. Don't compromise and don't be ashamed. Know who you are in Christ Jesus because Jesus died boldly for us and he gave his life. He gave, he gave everything so that in him we can have everything. So today's Bible verse is Proverbs 12, 28. In the way of righteousness is life and in the pathway thereof, there is no death. And know that in Christ Jesus, we are made righteous. So choose life this day. And not only just temporary, but for all the days of your life. Because Jesus is worth it. He loves you. He'll make a way. It may not be easy all the time. No, there's good times, there's bad, there's laughter, there's cries, there's mountain and there's valleys. But when you make Jesus everything, he'll be by your side every step of the way. Because he has purpose. And trust him. 
So as always, my little prince and princesses, I can't wait for our next reading adventure.